What's up, guys? It's Stealth here, and I'm back in Star Wars Night's Republic 2. Alright, I got my teammates. I fixed up HK as much as I could. And I should have all my buddies I could talk to, so let's go around and talk. Let's see, T3. Ah, it is an intelligence check. How did you get here, T3? You're deliberately avoiding answer. Why? Let me check your core. I'll be careful, I promise. I want to make sure you're alright. Just let me check, okay? Success! I'm finished. Are you alright? Let's play the message then. T3, you have been with us since Terrace. Without you, we would never have escaped that place. And for that, I thank you. I'm leaving this message inside you because I have seen glimpses of the future. And the bond that he and I share does not allow him to hide everything from me. More of his memories have returned, and they trouble him. He has remembered something. Something on the edge of the galaxy. And he believes that he must go there to end it. But I am afraid for him. Afraid that he may not return. I need you to be the beacon, T3. If he is lost out there, on the edge of the galaxy, if he finds whatever terrible thing he has seen, then he may not survive. If he doesn't make it back, then I need you to return to the Republic. Find help. If you cannot find me, then seek out other Jedi. The Republic I can't lose him, even if he believes he is protecting me. Friend of yours? I don't understand why you were concealing that from me. I understand. I didn't think you kept messages like that. So... The message doesn't tell me where the Ebon Hawk came from. But why don't you have that information? Deleted? By who? You deleted it? Why? Something's wrong here. There must be a reason for it. Don't worry. I'm certain you had a good reason. Or maybe you are trying to protect someone. So... Who was the person the hologram was talking about? Another missing friend? What happened to your old friend? Why aren't you with him? Because he could not take anyone with him. Even the woman. And he left you. I'm sorry, T3. But he did help. He found us. We could stop the Sith. Then there's hope after all. Alright. So, this help became in search of. Became in search of me. But why me? I was powerless, defenseless. He needed someone that's strong enough to fight the danger that was coming. Someone who knew war, battle, could make the hard choices that had to be made. I'm honored, T3. I'll do whatever I can to stop this threat. Alright, I'll go. But I need to talk to you and see if I can, uh... Get skills. Let's see. Uh, let's try computer core. Let's try that. Okay. Look. Let's try repair. Although I don't have enough. Oh, I could do repair on my rubber pad. Repair didn't work. What about computer? Nope. Is there anything else? Alright, I got... I upgraded him a little bit and I got a few computer spikes. That should do. Hey, Handmaiden. How's it going? Oh, welcome, Exile. Is there something you need? Oh, before I continue with this, just as a thing... 
it, they only intended for her to come along if you were male, and I'm clearly a female in this game. So if Handmaiden calls me he or anything like that, you know why that hap that is, okay? Good? Good. Alright, let's keep going. Are you alright? Yes. Your features, your stance, there is a calm about you that I did not notice on Telos. What do you mean? There is an energy about you, a lightness in your movements. It is something I have seen in only the most disciplined and revered of the Ichani Weapon Masters. Yet it comes to you with ease. I do feel better. I feel more in touch with my surroundings and others. It shows in your features. It is beautiful to see. Can I see some questions? You may ask. Uh, what are you doing? Let's go, let's go with that. I am training so that if danger should strike, my body and my reflexes will be prepared. That, and I had forgotten how long hyperspace travel can be. If I do not have something to focus my attention on, I fear my sanity will erode as well. You could always play Pazak with Atten. What do you mean, Pazak? What, again? No, I do not trust him. At cards? That too. Look, I don't think anyone here trusts each other. That is untrue. You and the Iridonian trust each other. Or at least the Iridonian trusts you. We heard much of the Iridonian when we served Atris. Atris believed that the Iridonian held the knowledge to restoring Telos. Bayadur? Yes. His skill with machines is something beyond which most can aspire to. His shield technology surpasses the designs of even the most skilled of Ichani power architects. I do not realize if you know what it means to have such a one respect and follow you. The Iridonian allied himself with no one on the entire world of Telos, yet he will follow you at the risk of his life. His stance, in many ways, mirrors yours. Where he walks, he carries a world upon his shoulders. And like you, I do not know if he has ever faced it. Okay. I don't want to talk about it, and I don't want you asking me about it either, okay? I will respect your wishes, and his. Forgive me. Don't apologize. It's just... it was a long time ago. It does not sound like it is in the past, but I shall respect your wishes. I have other questions. You may ask. Da, da, da. Uh, I guess I can't get the training thing yet. Maybe I have to get undressed for that. Why do you look different than your sisters? I honor the face of my mother. It is not something usually spoken of in the company of others. So you a different mother, but the same father? I do not wish to discuss it. If there is something else you wish to ask, you may do so. Okay. I meant no offense. Alright, now it's my turn to ask, ask something that shouldn't be asked. There is no need to apologize. You were merely remarking on something that you saw. There is no wrong in that. Is it a sensitive subject? It is not a sensitive subject, but a subject that requires trust. There is no such trust between you and I. And such trust takes time. Okay, so influence needed. You may ask. Alright. Do you have a name? Before entering Atris's service, yes, I carried a name. As all the children of the Ichani do. What was it? It is not important. My title and rank is of consequence, not my name. I take value in Atris's service, not in myself. Well, you should take value in yourself as well. We all have value in our oaths to others, and the promises we make. When we make that pledge, we are pledging ourselves to something greater. When importance is placed on the self, then by such acts the galaxy is unmade. There's some truth in what you say. Is that your judgment on me? If reasons of the self is why you turned away, then yes, perhaps there was a judgment there. But it was not intended as an attack. Do you think I lost myself when I disobeyed the Jedi? I do not know. That is a question you must ask yourself. Fair. Right now... No, 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 that would be bad. No, other questions. You may ask. I don't want to say either of those things, because those are mean things. Uh... I'll go. Now then, let me try... This. Yes? What are you doing? I am training that... Zock. What? No. The re the team. Yeah, I hit. I will risk it. All 
I think there's something I have to do with her first. I think I need to get her maybe her undressed or something. There's, some, there's something with underwear that has to happen. Uh, it is not possible to dock at the academy without the proper codes. Do you have them? Yes, but I could not give them to you. You may. Okay. Atris ever mentioned me? She said you. Oh, we already did this. Battle. In battle, the words are swept away, giving way to actions. Mercy, sacrifice, anger, fear. These are pure moments of expression. You may. All right. There's nothing else I can do. Let's see, what about Atris? Can I ask you about her? I do not wish to speak of her to you. God dang it! You may Ugh. It's like talking to a wall. Why are you called the handmaidens? We attend Atris. It is the duty of all of us, from the first of my sisters to me, the last of the handmaidens. You are the last. I am the last of the handmaidens. This is correct. I train so that one day that will no longer be true. Your skill is impressive, as is your devotion to your training. That is not entirely correct. There are times I am distracted. Perhaps once having known the ways of the Jedi, you may understand what occupies my thoughts. What do you mean? There is much knowledge on Telos, and only one of the Jedi remain. There is so much about their ways of battle, their forms, their stances, that may be lost forever if the last of the Jedi is taken from the galaxy. Battle is not the truth of the Jedi teachings. I believe it is the farthest thing from it. I get, and then let's go with this one. To lose those combat techniques would be tragic indeed, because she's a she focuses on combat. So let's talk to her style, because I need some influence with her. I know your meaning, but I have not been clear on mine. Stance, form, discipline are a means of expression and communication. They speak one's heart and one's devotion to their cause. So, devotion to their cause. Yes. The methods you use to meet your opponents speak truer than any words can express. When you risk pain or death, there is no truer sacrifice or strength. I'd say this is the best way. It shows how far you're willing to go for your goals. It was to the Jedi traitor Malak. It was to the Jedi traitor Revan. When Terrace was destroyed, it showed Malak's heart through its execution and intent. It was brutal, without finesse, but showed his commitment to defeat the Jedi. Yet with Revan, there was the same commitment, but it was a subtle thing, like weaving threads in a tapestry or strokes upon a canvas. He spoke through battle and tactics in a way one could never do in words. He showed his heart at Malachor V, and finally, at the end of the Jedi Civil War. I believe he was speaking to Malak in that final battle, though few knew it. Uh, what do you think he was saying? Through battle, Revan was meeting betrayal with betrayal, and showing Malak the pain he had inflicted on his master. What stronger display than death for conveying one's sense of being betrayed by one's own student? Revan's anger must have been great indeed. I would have wished to have been there for that final exchange, and seen the truth of their conflict with each other. They were driven only by the dark side. But to say that seems an untruth, based on what I know of the Jedi. The Force can drive others, but there is still choice, is there not? If there is no choice in the Force, then our teachings and our actions are for nothing, and I refuse to believe that is true. How are we going? Okay, so I gain light and dark. Did that do anything? Holy hell, what happened there? Why? What? Did I break it? I think I broke it. Yes? What are you doing? I am training. That... That. Never mind, I'll have to come back later. I think... I think I need to talk to her about it. When both she and I are naked. Which means I need to go take her out first. And then make her naked. That's the only thing. Hey, Kreia. How many more do we intend to gather to us? 
This ship is not the galaxy. There is only so much room. We've got plenty of room. As many as need to come with us and help us. Then prepare for an army, I think. For it seems many more will come in time. They will follow you because you are a leader. Their kind always needs such, even when the figure deserves no such obedience. I'm no leader. No? Perhaps not. Or perhaps you are different. Something more. I am not blind. I see what they see, hear their voices when they speak to you, and notice the change when they speak to others. Does the fact they obey me upset you? I know many things, and I know what I am not. I am no leader. I speak with a voice that will never move others. I speak with a passion that goes unheard. They obey you because you are a leader, and perhaps something more. Have you noticed what has been happening? Have you felt it in them? No. Well, I guess I've noticed their behavior is changing, Atten especially. The fool dances in your shadow for your favor. The disciple, he worships you quietly. The alien obeys you. Even within the machines, there are echoes. Watch them carefully. See their patterns and recognize the strength in it. Influence can be a weapon, one that you may need before your journey is done. They are my friends, not tools. And by the way, we haven't gotten the disciple yet anyway, you old crow. I care not which of the words you use, as long as you make use of that which you forge. That was Revan's way, I believe. It was a strength. What do you mean? Have you never asked yourself how Revan took the Republic and Jedi beneath him, how he made them his? He was a powerful presence. There was little one did not believe when he spoke it with conviction. Ah, but to make officers turn on their own people, to bomb innocent worlds, to make pacts, strong influence indeed. And where did these Sith teachings come from? And why did Revan embrace them so strongly? So many questions, yet the answers are few. They came from the Sith Empire. Oh, did they? No. Revan met no Sith Empire, yet he learned their teachings. Many have mistaken the soldiers beneath Revan, the machines that were constructed to be the Sith. They are wrong. The Sith is a belief, and what Revan formed was not an empire, but something else. Yet how he did it is curious. And I suspect the answer to that question is tied to another. How was Revan able to corrupt so many so quickly? First of all, yes, he did meet the Sith Empire on Droman Kaas in the uh, unknown regions of space. This is where he met them. That's why he was able to bring back forces within the first time. Second, do you have any ideas? Not a one, but we shall see where our journey takes us, I think, and see how many answers we come across, yes. I had other questions. Ask. You don't seem to like Handmaiden, why? There are countless reasons, and I have neither the time nor the patience to list them all. I trust her. She's here to help us, and allies should stand together. Do you think to turn her from Atris's will? If so, I hope your arrogance will prove true in time. But I will abide her presence. She may have her uses. Why do you say that? Because Atris is a threat. And as much as she would try to use us against you, so may we use her servants against her. Do not see every enemy as an enemy. See them instead as an ally, whether they realize it or not. This situation may yet work to our advantage. All right, I don't see her as, a, as an enemy, and neither should you. If that is your opinion, it is noted. Is that all you wish to speak to me about? Uh, uh, what's wrong with your eyes? There is nothing wrong with my sight, if that is your question. I see all that I need, though the seeing of things flesh and blood has failed me some time ago. They were distractions only. Might be a way to heal your sight. There is nothing wrong with my eyes. They simply have atrophied from use. They are adequate to distinguish shapes, silhouettes. If need be, I could heal them, restore my sight. But sight can prove a distraction. When one relies on sight to perceive the world, it is like trying to stare at the galaxy through a crack in the door. But that is a lesson for another time. You must learn to see crude matter for what it is before the veil is lifted. Questions. Ask. Alright, I think we have a high enough wisdom that we can ask this question. What are you, a Jedi or a Sith? Does it matter? Of course it does. 
Such titles allow you to break the galaxy into light and dark, categorize it. Perhaps I am neither, and I hold both as what they are, pieces of a whole. Know that I am your teacher, and that is enough. What were you? What do you wish to hear? That I once believed in the Code of the Jedi? That I felt the call of the Sith? That perhaps once I held the galaxy by its throat? That for every good work that I did, I brought equal harm upon the galaxy? That perhaps what the greatest of the Sith Lords knew of evil they learned from me? What would it matter now? There is only so much comfort in knowing such things, and it is not who I am now. I still wish to hear the story. Dark places in the galaxy where few tread, ancient centers of learning, of knowledge, but I did not walk alone. To be united by hatred is a fragile alliance at best. My will was not law. There were disagreements, ambition, and hunger for power. There are techniques within the Force against which there is no defense. I need more than that. If it means so much to you, then this I swear to you upon my life, upon our lives, that when your training is complete, I will answer everything. There shall be no more shadows between us, only truth that exists between master and apprentice. Head of the questions. Ask. Anything about the Sith that pursue us? I know of them, yes and how much like beasts they had become. Combined, united against the Jedi, they command legions of Sith. But above these legions, there are three who must be stopped. As long as any one of them lives, then we, and all life, are doomed. One bathes in pain, feeds on it for sustenance. The other has ceased being a living being so consumed by hunger that he has forgotten his own flesh. And the last is a creature of betrayals, for without such things there is no hope. Well, you're the last... You're the last one, you're the betrayer. That we figured out. So, one base in pain is Scion. Yes, of pain he has learned much. Of knowledge, of teaching, he knows nothing. Like the others, he was spawned by the horrors of the Mandalorian Wars. He exists solely to spread his pain to all Jedi everywhere. Who was the betrayer? I didn't know we know it's you. Even now, she is difficult to see. She must remain hidden for now until the time is right. If not, then all our efforts will be for nothing. In this, you must trust me. If she is exposed too soon, then this war will be over before it has begun. And the one consumed by hunger? The less said of that one, the better. Even a stray thought may draw him, and it is possible that he cannot be defeated. He is one who has learned the greatest of the Sith teachings, and it enslaved him. Until you are ready, 
we must not seek him out. Fair. Other questions. Ah. Did you know Revan? I misspoke before, and I do not wish to choose my words unwisely again. Uh, come on, there's gotta be something else. Did you know Atris? Atris herself is not as familiar to me as perhaps she should be. Yet I feel I know her, yes. What do you mean? Because Atris's path is one I walked long ago, and it is a chapter of my life that has been read and closed. She has taken the first steps, I think. We shall see. Surely you felt the righteous anger, the spoken judgments, the lack of forgiveness. You walked her path? Yeah, oh, we don't need another Sith Lord on our hands. I was a historian once, gathering the relics of the Jedi, learning the ancient mysteries. Always there were more questions. One quickly learns that the Jedi Code does not give all the answers. If you are to truly understand then you will need the contrast, not adherence to a single idea. That is why Atris and the others blamed me, sentenced me. They believed me responsible for Revan's fall. You trained Revan. You have already asked much. I do not wish to speak of this any longer. I how did Revan amass such huge force? Have you never asked yourself how- Oh, we did this already. Alright, that's it. I want to keep losing influence with Kreia, because that's the best way for her, because as a light type person, you lose influence. As dark side, you'll gain it with her. Yes. Force. Very well. What is it that drives you? Uh... Nothing about the bond, really. Uh... Are we done with you? Thank God. I think we're done with her for now. Let's see, there's Bayadur. We can talk to Bayadur. I know this is becoming an extremely long video. Bayadur, what's up? General? Me you don't have to call me General. Sorry. Yes, I can't get my head out of the past. I'm just wondering what you've been doing since the war ended. I moved around for a couple years. Working as a starship mechanic got me from place to place. I wasn't ready to settle down after the war. During my exile, I did much the same thing. Then you understand my restlessness. Though the war had ended, I couldn't find peace in anything. As long as I kept moving, I didn't have to think about what happened. Know what I mean? Only too well. I'm sure you do. I decided I'd do something constructive. I wanted to make up for the things I'd done in the war. I wanted to design planetary shields, but there weren't many systems with the credits to spare. There was more that needed to be rebuilt than protected. I found out that Telos was going to be the flagship project for the Republic, and it sounded like something good. I saw Telos before the Sith raised it, and deserved a better fate. But Zerka ruined everything. I thought I could force Zerka out on my own, but I guess I can't fix everything myself. I think taking on Zerka single-handedly might be a little out of your league. All I wanted to do was send a message, but I couldn't even do that right. That's the past, though. It's good to be working with you again, General. Something else I can help you with? Uh, where'd you pick up the remote? That old thing? I built him when I was a kid. Been following me around for years now, despite what I've done to try and chase him off. Hey, just kidding. I'm happy to have you around. What's it do, other than follow you? He helps me out with repairs. I outfitted him with a cutting laser and some other tools for delicate modifications. He's also good for singeing the pants of annoying techs. I've been thinking about doing some other work on him, but I barely have time. Too busy fixing up the ship. Something else I can help you with? Uh, well... What are you doing? Just working on the ship. I'm not sure who got her up and running, but I'm amazed she's even space-worthy. Whoever made these repairs doesn't think like most mechanics. But don't worry, I'll get everything in shape. I didn't want to talk about the war, but can I ask you something? What is it? Why did you decide to fight? The, Mandal the Mandalorians had to be stopped. I felt the same way. I remembered when word of the Mandalorian attacks arrived on Iridonia. My people had colonies across the Outer Rim. Many of them were among the first systems to fall. As good as reason any for joining. 
I did not join because I wanted to protect, though. I hated them. I wanted to destroy them. To give them the mercy they gave the people they conquered. I remember the thrill I felt when we fought them in battle. Victories were rare, but we celebrated every Mandalorian's death. Do you know how it felt? Jay, I felt it too. The rush of life as they were cut down. It's always on my mind now. That loss of control blinded me. Turned me into a weapon. I just needed to get that off my chest. Was there something you... Uh, opinion of the Tilo situation. If the Republic would just rein Zerka in, there'd be no problem. But as long as Zerka is allowed to undermine the Athorian's efforts, Telos will remain dead. I can't take seeing my work being used by those bloodsuckers. But there's nothing I can do about it, so let's talk about something else. Something else I can... How'd you lose your arm? I got tired of it. Kept dropping my hydro spanner. Figured I'd get a new one. Yeah, I'll bet that was fun. I was only kidding. Actually, it was a souvenir from Malakor. I was lucky it was all I lost. But at least it gave me something to do, right? Everyone always said I was probably half machine anyway. Something else I can help you with. That's it. Yeah, it's very hard to gain any influence at all with Bayater. He's kind of like... There's very specific things you need to do. Let's check in with Atten. He's our last dude to check in with. And then we should be done. Something up? Questions. Nothing. Alright, until we get Kraya to open up about the Force and stuff, we don't have anything to talk about here. Which is okay. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. When we return, we're gonna be heading to our first destination, which I think will be Narshada, if I remember right. Yeah, Narshada. That's gonna be it for me, guys. See you all in the next video.